I started. Hello, friends. I am Samantha. This happens every time. I don't know how to start a video. Okay, so let's just get into this. I have wanted to make these videos for a while. And when I say these, I mean this video is the first of three that I have been wanting to make. And it's this little series that I like to call Be a good person to people with cancer. <laughs> There's three videos in this series. One is what to say to someone who has cancer. Another one is what to do for someone who has cancer slash what to give them gifts. People want to know that a lot. And uh, the third one is how to care for someone who has cancer. So this video would be for someone who is actually looking after someone who has cancer, um, lives with them and stuff like that. Honestly, there are a lot of bad things to say to someone with cancer. Just look it up on YouTube, like what not to say to a cancer patient or like things that people say to cancer patients. I think that people can use common sense uh, not to say those things, but what really is hard is coming up with something that is good to say that's not going to make someone feel bad. I asked on Instagram, cancer patients slash survivors, what's the best thing you can say to someone recently diagnosed? I'm going to go through all these responses that people have given me, um, but just know that everybody is different, so everyone might not like all of these responses, so just think about the person that you would be speaking to and the type of person they are and if they would appreciate these comments or not. The first thing that someone wrote was, I'm here for you. I personally think that that's just a really good thing to say no matter how well you know the person. It's just kind of a really safe thing to say. Um, it's really not pushy, you're not forcing somebody to talk to you, but you're letting them know that you're there for them. If you haven't spoken to someone in a really long time but you still want to say something to them, I think that that is a good thing. This person writes, I'm going to make you food for a week and then do it. I got a million empty offers of help. So that is one of the number one things I've seen people complain about and I'm going to touch on that in my next video about what to do for a cancer patient. Telling somebody I'm going to do this for you is better than saying let me know if you need anything. If you say let me know if you need anything it kind of puts it on them and they might be like well I don't want to ask them for help because I don't want to inconvenience them, but be careful about that also because if you don't know the person super well, especially right after they're diagnosed, they may not want to see a bunch of people, they may not want to talk to a bunch of people that they know and you're friends with them, but maybe they just want to like be spending time with their family. So just be careful, be respectful. Um, I think it is a really, really good thing to say that, but um, just take into account how much you actually know the person. Someone wrote, anything that doesn't make it sound scary or sad. More so, that sucks, but you got this. I think this might be my favorite. It doesn't matter how well you know the person, it's such an easy thing to say. Somebody said this to me that I don't know very well, and they kind of brought up an example. They were like, hey, um, the few times that I've met you, I noticed this about you, and I noticed that you are a strong person, and so I know that you can get through this. It's more personal if you say something like that. It wasn't just somebody saying like, yeah, you can do it, like, because how do you know I can do it? This is a really, really hard thing, like, how do you know that I can handle this? But when they say that example, then it kind of just gives you that courage and, be, and confidence and be like, oh yeah, I did this thing that time and that was hard. And even if it's just a small little stupid thing, um, it just shows that they're thinking of you. Let's get coffee or go to the movies. Something other than the big C. The big C means cancer. <laughs> um, yes, and I, I definitely agree with this one. It feels really good to just go out and do something where you're not thinking about cancer. And to me, that is the kind of thing that I needed, not obviously right away, right after I was diagnosed, but actually, yeah, right away after I was diagnosed, I 
immediately wanted to go hiking with my boyfriend. If you are close enough to the person that you know about their diagnosis right after they've been diagnosed, you probably are in that inner circle of people that um, they would like to see. Getting out and doing stuff before I started chemo was something I really wanted to do to just kind of be like, okay, this is the last time I can do this thing for a while. Uh, for me, that was hiking. I really like hiking. The whole like, I'm gonna go get coffee with you, that's something that's really simple and easy and they could even do that during treatment, not like in the few days after chemo when they're dying, but <laughs> if they have chemo every other week and that second week after they're recovering, that's a safe time to ask if they wanna go do something. Not talking about the diagnosis is sometimes just more refreshing than even talking about it. So it really just depends on their mood and stuff. But that is such a great thing to say. I am sorry you're going through this. So I have a love-hate relationship with this because people said this to me and I can't even remember initially. I think initially I just felt awkward when people said this to me because I didn't really know how to respond to it. It's kind of like, oh, it's okay. I hated going out in public and people seeing me without hair and being like, oh no, like that poor person. Like, I just hated that. I didn't like the extra tension that came from people feeling sorry for me. So that's why I don't really like that one. Um, I had to kind of start looking past what they were actually saying and start to understand what they were meaning to say. When I did that, I actually appreciated what people had to say a lot more because I recognize that it's really hard to come up with something to say to someone that has been diagnosed with cancer. Usually people aren't going to say something that makes you feel amazing, right? Like, it's not, it's kind of impossible to say that. So if you're looking to try to say something to someone where they like automatically feel better and like upbeat, that's not going to happen. So you need to accept that and I needed to accept that. I needed to accept that no one could say anything that would make me feel amazing. And I just needed to appreciate where they were coming from and what they were trying to say to me. So that's why um, I, I got where people were coming from on this one. I just didn't really like the pity look and I, I was tired of that because I got that a lot. There is nothing I can say that will make this better but know that I am here for you. I love that. I just, that's great. That's a, it's one of the, it's perfect. I'm not going anywhere and I don't love you any less. This is such a great thing to say to like your significant other. I can't tell you how many times Gray had to remind me of this one. <laughs> um, I felt guilty for having cancer, sort of. Being in a relationship just because of all the things that come with cancer and I felt bad for him. Um, if you want more information about this, I've got another video called Cancer Affected Our Relationship and it goes way more in depth about how cancer affected our relationship and it, I think it's kind of helpful for any couple that's going through this. If your significant other has cancer, I think this is a good thing to say a lot. <laughs> I love you and I'm here for you. What do you need slash what can I do for you? I think this is good but I know that there are gonna be people that are like, this is bad because they're not just doing it. They're asking you and they don't wanna feel guilty for asking for something. Um, but I do think that this is good for me just because I wouldn't want someone to just come do something for me. These sorts of things have to do with how well you know the person and uh, just knowing what kinds of things they would want or what kinds of things they would need. But I think that if you aren't super, super close to someone saying, what do you need slash what can I do is a good thing because you're, you're showing that you're still willing to help. And um, if they do need you, then they can ask you for something. I'm taking you out one day and we can do whatever you want. Schedule it right then and there. Yep. Like I said, doing something that's not cancer related is awesome. I'm here for you and then actually call text slash checkup. If you don't know them very well, I don't think you should be checking up on them every single day, but checking up on them every once in a while is a really good thing to do. 
and um, it shows that you care. This is just a bump in the road. You will overcome this. This is another like positivity thing that's great and some people really like to hear, but I personally did not like positive things very much. I thought that I was being positive or as positive as I could be, and I didn't like it if at any moment someone was more positive than me. <laughs> Usually how the conversations would go for me would be like, hey, how are you doing? I would be like, I'm good. I've had a hard day though. This and this and this happened. And they'd be like, oh wow, that's so rough. I'm sorry. And then I'd be like, yeah, but it'll be okay. And that's usually how those conversations get went. And it felt fine to me when I was the person saying like, yeah, I'll be okay. But if the conversation went, hey, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm good, but I'm having all these problems with things. And then they were like, oh, you'll get through them. It didn't really make me feel like they were listening to me, so. This person says, not much to say. Positivity can trigger too. Listen, ask, show interest. That's basically exactly what I just said, so. I've been there and I can listen when you need an ear. The person that sent this in is a cancer patient. And this is such a good thing to say to another cancer patient if you have had cancer. But don't say this. Do not say this if you don't have cancer. Do not say this if you were like, I went through this really hard time in my life and you're trying to apply it to their situation. Don't say this if you know someone that's had cancer. Listen to them. It's about them. It's not about you. Just listen. Don't say anything. That's great. That sometimes is the best thing you can do. You have far more strength than you realize. So this is just so true. People always say like, I could not han handle a cancer diagnosis, like you're handling it. I could not go through all the treatments. And it's, it's just, it's just not true. Um, you don't know, first of all, you don't know how you would be handling it because you're not in the situation. But like, second of all, people are capable of so much more than they realize. If someone told you, you have to do all these things or you're going to die, which is literally what a cancer diagnosis is, is you're going to have to remove it, you're going to have to fight against it and do treatments and stuff, or it's going to kill you. If you are faced with those two options, which one are you gonna pick, right? So you're gonna pick the option to fight. It, it blows my mind when people say that, that they're like, I couldn't do what you're doing. Like, if you were in my situation, you most certainly could. You are capable of so much more than you realize. And when people are put to a challenge, they rise up to it. That is just such good advice, but, but it's not something they always want to hear or I always wanted to hear. Um, especially, I, I honestly welcomed positive advice like that more from people who were cancer survivors than from random people. And I think it was just because they've gone through this and they know what it's like. And so it has more meaning to me than if it came from somebody who's just trying to be positive. Um, but I still think it is a really, really good thing to say but I think you need to judge the situation. Like I said, if they're complaining about their day and they're saying that things are so hard, don't say something like that. Just recognize that things are hard. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Again, kind of the same thing as before. That's an example of hope. It's so super true. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I know that, I, I still know that, but I today am still dealing with side effects of cancer treatment because I'm still going through cancer treatment and things suck. And on the days when things suck, I don't want people to say things like there's light at the end of the tunnel because I'm still in the tunnel. I recognize that I am moving towards the light and that there is going to be light at the end of the tunnel and whatnot. But right now I'm in the tunnel and right now I want you to recognize that I'm in the tunnel and I want you to see that this is hard. All cancer patients need to have hope, right? Um, if you don't have hope, you're not going to do well because you're not going to want to do anything. You're just gonna wanna give up and die. I mean, all cancer patients have that hope of getting through it and being done with it. So those are the responses I got. Uh, a lot of the other ones were duplicates and stuff. So I think that if you're trying to decide what to say and you don't know if it's gonna be a good thing to say or not, I think it's better to just say something because they will recognize that you're trying. Don't expect a response right away. I got 
over flooded with messages. Um, and then people who are more popular than myself, which is a million people, probably would get like even more messages than I got. So it's all overwhelming to have to respond to that many people, um, especially when you're hit with something that you're really just trying to focus on yourself. If you have any more suggestions of things to say, if you are a cancer patient or a survivor, leave them in the comments below. Help these people out that searched up this video that don't know what to say. There are a lot of people that have had cancer that watch these videos, so there is a lot of people probably in the comments that are cancer survivors. So use their advice, they are smart. <laughs> Be on the lookout for those other two videos that I mentioned before, and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and check out some of the other videos I've done and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you think my channel will help somebody, please share it with them. Yeah, that's all, bye.